even though the machine is not completely done, I've done enough to be able to do some test cuts, and I want to show you some of that today. Here you can see some of my first cuts. The one in the middle there that's supposed to be concentric circles was one of my very first test cuts. That uh, inner circle is supposed to be in the middle, but as you can see, it's not. So I stopped and worked on uh, tuning the motors, and then I did the second cut, which is the one on the left. And you can see that one is concentric, and it worked out very nicely. So then I take the next step and actually tried to um, do a name. And as you can see, that turned out pretty good too. So when my son saw that I could cut a name into a piece of wood, I, he asked for the same thing for Christmas. So here I am uh, with a piece of hard maple cutting his name into a piece of wood. Uh, in, this, in these cases, I'm using a router bit and it's spinning at probably a 2000 RPM. And uh, uh, this is four times speed. I'm going pretty slow on my cuts just because I'm testing the machine and it worked out really nicely. So while you watch it cut, I'll tell you what else I need to do on the machine. First of all, the motors are not being enabled by the software. They're always enabled right now, and that can have its, uh, some problems. Secondly, the spindle motor, it's the speed is not being controlled by the software either. I'm controlling that manually with the potentiometer. So those are some of the things I need to do. Another thing I also would like to do is to if one of the motors faults, I would like it to tell the software so that the whole program stops. I don't want it to keep running with one of the motors um, having lost steps or, or gotten out of sync or whatever. I would like to make sure that the software stops in that case. So those are some things that I still need to do. Uh, oh, and lastly, the oiler pump uh, is, I would like that to be turned on whenever the machine is on and off when it right now and off when the machine is off. Right now, I am uh, every time I do a cut, I do a manual uh, oil pump uh, and to keep the machine oiled. So that's basically where I am. Uh, things are going great. Here's the finished product after a little bit of sanding. It looked really nice. Now, can my machine cut steel? What am I doing here? Well, I have an old table saw very old. It was built in the 50s and it happens to have a three quarter inch arbor on it. And so I can't find blades. They don't make blades with three quarter inch arbor. I have basically two choices. Buy blades with one inch arbor, which is a 10 inch saw. So they don't come very, it's hard to get a one inch bore in a 10 inch blade. So those are few and far between. And I can use a spacer if I have a one inch bore uh, or to have somebody else bore out my blades for me. Well, if I can do it myself, then I will. So here's my test cut. This is just a seven and a quarter inch blade that I had sitting around not being used that I used as a test cut and it's working beautifully. This is the blade that I went and purchased after that first test and as much nicer blade. And so this one I'm boring out to actually use on my saw because the other, the smaller blade worked really nicely. So I'm using a, a roughing, eight inch, eight inch roughing end mill to do the initial cuts. And then I go back through as a finishing pass with a, a, a nicer, smoother end mill, also an eighth inch. And this worked beautifully. I put it on my saw and I cannot tell you how much better my saw cuts with a nice blade on it. And in a second here, you'll see a picture of my saw blade on the machine. There it is. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.